guys. Sean, obviously fantastic to see Sophie back here in this test squad. Um, can you, I guess, first tell us the news of getting to tell that she was in the squad? Yeah, it was, it was a nice call to make. She's been through a lot, so for over the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, she's pretty emotional about it. She's put a lot of hard work in over the last 12 months in particular, but even before the previous 12 months as well. So she's missed out on some big tournaments for us. So, yeah, it's a nice call to make. In terms of what she was able to do to, to get back to this level, was there a specific point this season that you knew she was ready for, I guess, coming back in the, the longest format as well? I mean, we've always kept in touch with her. You know, even you know when it happened to her, I was, you know, Spoke to her pretty quickly afterwards and said, you know, there's there's lots of cricket coming up next season. You know, focus on that, um, get yourself right, and, and we'll see what happens after that. Um, yeah, obviously she's come back and played really well, so she's made her way in performances. So, and probably surprised herself a little bit about how well she's gone. Um, yeah, look, she's an all-format player. She was an all-format player for us before she got injured, and she's come back in in great nick. So good to see. There can't be too many Australian squads that have um, included five spinners for a game at the Wacker. Clearly, you're not sure if the pace ball was either. Is there a little bit of a sense of unknown about what you're going to get at the Wacker next week and you're trying to cover all bases? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So, first off, we're uh, we're fortunate. with We've got some pace bowling all-rounders in the team. We've got spin bowling all-rounders in the team. Um, and I think looking at the weather forecast, it, it's been hot. The Wacker has spun a little bit this season as well. So, yeah, we... We have tried to cover all bases. Um, it's going to be hot early next week. I think it's 39 the first day of the test as well. So we're going to have to see what it, what the wicket looks like when we turn up. Um, it could turn, it could be a pace bowling wicket. Traditionally, the wacker has been, but we've, we've got all bases covered, I think, with that. Megan is in there, was one of the seam bowlers. She, she, she was quite open with us all at the beginning of the season about she didn't particularly see herself as a future of test match cricket. You can clearly see that. Differently, was there a, a temptation to look at another seam bowler for that position, or clearly in your mind, Megan is still the next yeah. cat in the bank there? Yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit horses for courses. I mean, the wacker, if, if it is going to swing and bounce, I think um, Megan it could suit her if, if that's the case. But um, yeah, like we certainly didn't rule her out of test selection. Um, we didn't think India was going to be suitable for her, and I think that proved to be the case. But the wacker is a different proposition, so. Yeah, I think we just need to wait, see what we get there, and uh, and see how uh, how the wicket looks. I think so. Yep. How's Lauren Cheadle been in your chats with her? Legs obviously pretty tough. Couple weeks ago. Yeah, really tough. Yeah, um, yeah, devastating. Um, and the wacker probably would have suited her more than the Indian uh, Test match as well. So, um, yeah, obviously thoughts with her. You know, she just needs to concentrate on on her health, and and hopefully she comes back and gets herself right again and, and puts herself back in contention. So, you know, when she's swinging it and bowling with some pace, then she's a threat. There's not too many left arm pace bowlers around the world like her. So, um, yeah, she just needs to focus on getting getting healthy. But you can see her as a part of this team long term? Yeah, I think, yeah, we've always thought she's got the capability to play international cricket. Um, that's why we picked her when she was really young. Um, she's still got that, uh, so yeah, but there's more important things in life to worry about right now for her. Yeah. In terms of some of those spinners, we obviously have had a lot of guests um, at JJ in yep. home conditions this summer. Um, she's still in this squad, but how do you go about, especially Jess and Sophie, both similar players, different stages of their career, can you, can you see a, an 11 where they're both in the same team, or do you think it'll probably be one or the other? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, we're we're blessed in a way that we've got so many spin options. Um, I think it's hard to play two left arm orthodox spinners in, in the same team. I think because we've got you know some great options with leg spin as well. So um, you know you try to pick a, a, a balanced squad with, with multiple bowling options. It's been tough for, for, for Jess, absolutely. You know, she's got a great record for Australia. We'd you know, really value that, recognise it. Um, but you know the players that have come in have done really well. They've, you know, she hasn't been able to force her way back in, so um, door's certainly not closed. You know, we've got a World Cup in Bangladesh, we've got the series in Bangladesh coming up as well. Those conditions might be uh, more suitable to, to her type of bowling as well. So, um, yeah, the, you know, she's she's a really highly valued member of, of this squad. She has been for a long time and, you know, the record speaks for itself. Um, we've just got some great competition in the squad and 
you've got to be on your game um, all the time to, to keep staying in the team. So, yeah, so that's where it is with, with JJ at the moment. Um, you know, she's training really well. She keeps putting her hand up for selection. So, um, you know, we're not, uh, we haven't counted her out of future opportunities, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, there's, there's competition for places. Just on the um, Green and Gold um, series that you've announced, um, is this like the first step towards a more regular Red Bull setup for the women, or do you still see it remaining a bit of an ad hoc thing where you play these extra Australia A type fixtures? Can you see a day where there's a Red Bull competition? Oh, so, you know, the Australia A program, we're ramping back, back up again, and we want to have Red Bull uh, opportunities in every every series that we play with, with Australia A. Um, and this three-day fixture is, is something that supplements that. So we want to make this a, an annual fixture if we can. I think it's a great opportunity for, for players on the edge of, of international selection. And, and we've even got some who are you know, uh, international cricketers. They're playing as well. Um, yeah, so I think if you if you bundle all those together with um, you know three day game, Aussie opportunities at home and and overseas, I think that sets us up pretty well for for the test match um, experience that the players get. What does the expanded Aussie program look like? Yeah, so we're we're trying to lock in some tours with with India at the moment. So we want to have a, a four year program with them. We've got uh, England who come out every every time the Ashes is on and we go over there. So so I think once we've got, you know, an Indian series, an England series, and then, you know, if, if other opportunities pop up, we'll look at that as well. But um, a home and away series every year for an A program, it's pretty solid, I think. And how do the under-19s come into that too? I know they're about to go to Sri Lanka. Yep, yeah, so that that's part of that pathway as well. So um, yeah, they'll go to Sri Lanka, then there'll be a reciprocal program back out here at the start of the the summer. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots of opportunities coming up for our best young cricketers coming through. So um, whether there's some red ball opportunities with the 19s as well, that, that'll be looked at. Um, you know, and then there's things like uh, camps through India, like batting or spin camps that we want to take some of the players to as well. You obviously can't pick all the players in these representative squads, but I guess a couple of names at either end of their careers that aren't in there is Georgia Redmayne and then Chloe Ainsworth, who had a breakout yep. WBBL. Have they just missed selection? Is there anything else behind them not being in those two squads? Yeah, Georgia's uh, unavailable, so she's got um, a family wedding that she's she's going to, so unfortunately uh, she's not available for, for that. Um, and you know, I'm sure she would have loved to have played in that game. Um, and Chloe, um, plan for her she's she's had a massive season already and, and she does have a bit of an ankle issue that she's going to get that looked at at the end of the season so we've decided the best thing for her is to miss this game with a view to you know these a opportunities start of next summer so yeah she's someone we're certainly got an eye on I think she's got a great future ahead of us Chloe. Just on um, Heather Graham obviously she's dropped out of this side as well she yep. seems to be sort of that example of a player who is doing everything she needs to do that can get in the squad but yeah. can't quite break the limit. Yeah. Have you had those conversations about is there more she can do or is it, is it just about how good this current moment is that's going to be the place yeah. to get in? Yeah, it, it's a tough one for her. I mean, and we had a similar situation with Nick Carey as well, sort of in and out of the squad, really conscious of those players who aren't getting opportunities. And it was the same with JJ coming back from India. We wanted to get her some games in WNCL. We did the same with Heather during this series. Um, yeah, it, it's a it's a tough one being on the edge of selection and, and not, not getting game opportunities to, to put your hand up. Um, so yeah, we've had lots of conversations with her. I mean, she's in, in competition with Annabelle and um, Kim Garth to a degree, the type of role she, she could play with death bowling with Megan Shute as well. So depending on what format um, we're talking about, I mean, Heather's got a great skill set. Um, and it was great for her to go back and get some runs for Tassie the other day. Um, she's, she's in the mix. Like she's, she's a very, very good cricketer. Um, we've just got, we've got some good <laughs> good options ahead of her at the moment. Can I just ask about the Bangladesh tour that follows the WPL? Um, yep. Are you expecting full availability of players for that? I know yep. there's been some issues for England with the proximity of their New Zealand tour. Are you expecting uh, even players that go late into that tournament to be available for Bangladesh? Yeah, so WPL finishes and then there's three days between them finishing and then getting to Bangladesh and playing. So, so it was always going to be tight. Um, but yeah, we've, we've made sure in the scheduling that everyone was going to be available for that.